Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's get into motion controls on the open source side of things, finding something comparable to After Effects that is Windows and Linux compatible. Let's look at Natron. I know it's not new, but still loads of possibilities and some road ahead to go. Let's do it. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so you can know about them and make use of them. Go back and watch some of the videos that we've done. There's lots of fantastic content reviewing all kinds of tools, all kinds of technologies, some commercial, mostly open source. Uh, I like to do comparisons. I like to look at the core features and the best uses of those things, and I'll let you know that they exist. So go do that and uh, get some background. For today, I wanted to dig into Natron, which is an open source motion control tool. It's a very cool concept, and it can look a little daunting coming out of the box, but we're going to dig through some simple concepts here to kind of demystify some things. First of all, do know that the team that was building this, I believe them called, they call themselves Inria, they have seemingly dissolved. I looked through their website. They were looking for somebody else to take up the mantle of this Natron tool. It's actually gotten a lot of good press as a motion control tool in the open source community, but the group that did it, I guess, just couldn't maintain it, couldn't hold it up anymore, and they're looking for somebody else to take that over. We'll get more on that in a minute. Uh, but uh, still a great tool, um, and I believe there's a lot of possibilities, and it is a stable product that offers some good value. So um, the tool is Python-based, if you're interested to know that. That opens up possibilities of integrations with other tools that are based on Python, like Krita, like GIMP. Those tools are all Python-based, and there's opportunities for plug-in, opportunities for for uh, collaboration and integration. So intriguing, right? Uh, if KDE or uh, any other groups you guys are watching this, um, it's out there. <laughs> I can encourage you to take a look and uh, maybe consider adding that into your portfolio. It's, it's a fantastic idea that I'd hate to see die. Um, so Natron. As I mentioned during the introduction, it is Windows and Linux compatible. There are builds for both sides of the fence, so uh, everybody have at it. I think there's even a Mac build. Uh, so this is a really versatile uh, product uh, that was built. It was mainly developed from 2013 to 2018, so it is, uh, let's just say, two years since the last major release. But again, it's keeping pace with Windows 10 and still works. I'm on Windows 10 right now, and I haven't really had any major problems with that. So... Uh, that's the little bit of background. Let's get into it, right? Uh, you're hearing me ramble on about the history of things. This is the interface coming out of the box. It can be a little daunting to see this and wonder, where's the timeline? Where's the intuition of it? I'm going to warn you up front, intuition is not the strong point of this tool. It's very powerful, <laughs> but the, the interface is hard. Um, so I'm going to get you the basics to get started. And to be honest with you, I'm still figuring out some of these things. The documentation out there is unfortunately incomplete. And again, I mentioned the group that made this has dispersed seemingly. There's a lot of gaps. A lot of these you'll see um, on the online documentation are simply empty. They were not documented. So there are some sources out there, some other uh, editors and, and artistic folks have tried to tackle this. Um, so I'm going to attempt to give you some foundation, and I also invite you to go check those out as well, um, because, again, this is a very powerful option, and there's there's some value to be had there. If you're looking for a motion control that is in the open source community that has some extensibility options, and you're just looking for another alternative to After Effects, uh, maybe you're looking to save that 10 bucks a month. <laughs> so uh, know that that is the case. So coming out here... An important concept to understand is that it looks at objects as nodes. Um, that could be a layer, like a drawing. It could be a filter. Those are all considered nodes that are drawn out in this view, uh, kind of like a Visio relationship mapping layout. Um, and it makes more sense as you start to use it. It's just tough to kind of adapt to this if you haven't used it before. So the viewer here is what you see. You have to connect nodes to the viewer to see them. That becomes important when you try to export it because you actually have to connect your things into an uh, output writer. <laughs> if that hasn't confused you by now, let's keep going. So 
Anything I'm about to do down here, you can also do in the upper left-hand side. The controls are all there. I just find it easier to kind of right-click and work all in the same space. So down here, I am going to go to Draw, and I'm going to add in text. And I'm going to begin up here just by shortening the span. The default starting frame range, you can expand this, is 250 uh, frames. I'm just going to trim that down just for sake of the demo so it's a little simpler to see. And then come back to my text node here. On the right, you'll see the properties appropriate to that. This is very straightforward, uh, this part. <laughs> I'm going to put in some text here so you can kind of see, and that updates uh, what that is. If I was going to have multiple text nodes, multiple text layers, um, I could, again, change this to say, OK, well, this is uh, the first layer or something like that. And that updates on the, the diagram here, the graph, so I can keep track of those somewhat simply. So. Again, think of this as kind of like your layer stacking. It's just, uh, it's, it lays it out kind of as a map instead of um, as a linear progression like that. So uh, that is adding in text. All right, some basic animation. That'd be good, right? Let's look at that. So I'm going to drag this up so you can kind of see again, there's a relationship established there into the viewer. I'm going to make our starting point, And this is cool again, because this is kind of the After Effects approach. I'm just going to visually grab and move that. You could also do this with the the fine-tune metrics over here in the properties panel, but again, sometimes it's just easier to click and drag it, right? Um, so <laughs> starting point, uh, what I'm going to do next is we need to tell it from an animation point, uh, animate from this point forward. That's called a keyframe or a key. I'm going to come into the properties, and if I right-click really anywhere up here, you can see this option set key on all parameters. That's important for now because that's going to encompass all the adjustments I make, whether it's scale, whether it's rotation, whether it's kind of 3D space flipping around um, on the planes, uh, the Y and Z axis. Um, that's the one I'm going to do. You could also pick a specific property here, right click on one of those and say set a key uh, to that specifically. Uh, that's if you just wanted a keyframe that aspect but i want to get them all so i'm going to set a key on all parameters as my starting point i'm going to move the position the frame up to 50 and then i'm going to take this thing because we're now we're animating i want it to go over here um, i want to add some rotation into this maybe i want to change the scale a little bit too and yeah, maybe I uh, want to add in some dimensionality to it here as well, just because. All right. So now, yeah, I can either drag this manually. You can already see that that has created the animation for me, or I can use these play buttons where I could watch it do that in forward or reverse, because sometimes you can discover blips or bumps, uh, things you didn't intend going forwards and backwards. That's kind of a useful aspect of that. So that's a basic crash course on doing some animation that will work with objects. You can create shapes. You can bring in pictures. You can do videos. You can do all kinds of cool things. This is a fully featured uh, motion control tool like that. Um, and there are a ton of supported format. That's the, again, the beautiful thing about open source is that they spare no expense, so to speak, <laughs> uh, irony there, um, in bringing in format uh, compatibility. It's just the versatility is amazing in open source tools. So having done that, now it would be good to know how we actually do something more with this, how we get it out of the tool, right? Because <laughs> it's useless if we can't do that. So to do that, again, I'm going to right click in the workspace in the, uh, the node graph. And this is a little tricky. I'm going to go over image, add a right node. All right. And I'm just going to give this, this is actually the name of the output, okay? The file I'm going to make. So I'm going to call this demo neutron one it's good practice i found to actually just put in the dot here the period and the format that you're going to desire i'm going to say mp4 and you'll notice the file type automatically adjusted i'm pointing like you can see that uh, mp4 uh, because that's the file extension i add had you can dig through these there is a ton of these um, so chances are if you're using one favorite one it's probably there Okay, I'm going to do MP4 because that's the one I'm comfortable with. And I'm going to save that. And that added the node. 
Now you'll note here, as I tried to explain before briefly, that this works on relationships like a Visio diagram. This has no connection. Right now, everything I'm seeing goes to the viewer. This is probably not the best way to do that um, because it would just make sense in an intuitive standpoint to say, well, I'm exporting. Why can't you just automatically update that for me? It's the way it is. <laughs> just know it's there. So I'm going to break off this relationship. If I just kind of click, drag into nothing, that breaks it. And then I'm going to grab the stub down here and drop that on top of the right node. Okay. Click on that one. So we're looking at those properties. And I'm going to click render. Now, what that should do is open up another view, uh, view here, another uh, window, excuse me, for, for vernacular. Tell me how that's going. And that will export to the place that I picked. And I forgot, there's actually a secondary property for frames. Um, so you'll have to look at that if you didn't want that initial 250 frame export. So be aware of that. <laughs> but again, that was done. It exported. Um, I did a previous demo because I made it a little more complex using some of the other options. Uh, just to jump back to the node graph, I mentioned there was uh, the possibility for GMIC, uh, which is another Python based technology, and that is already here. It's included by default. So you have these different things you can try out and throw them on. When you do them, it treats them again like a node, like a layer. It needs to have a relationship. Um, this could be useful in the sense of you can kind of map things out if you wanted to take something out. It's different in that you don't unhide or hide layers. You just draw the relationships to them. A little bit of a different idea, if that makes sense. Uh, but that's how it works. All right. And then to give you just kind of an idea of what actually happened, I did this well, not through that. <laughs> that video doesn't work. But through this one, VLC, another fantastic tool. You can kind of see this is a very, very basic test, but you can kind of see how I applied an effect on top of that one of the GMIC things, just so you could see it working. Again, this is a very simple concept test, um, but you can see that happening uh, and that it works. So in a nutshell, that is the premise of Natron. I will put a link to download in the description below. Right now, the site is still up for download. So if you're considering it, do it now and hold on to it. Because again, I don't know how long that's going to be up. The group maintaining it is not really keeping up anymore. Um, so go get it now. Interesting to note, though, on that vein, <laughs> is that I did just some curiosity digging and found that once upon a time, around the last release of Natron, lo and behold, on the KDE roadmap, area here they have natron integration added on so that could imply that they do already have a vested interest in that tool maybe be considering bringing some of that into the fold maybe considering taking that up don't know can't say on that this is all speculation just looking at this but it's encouraging to see that they were at least very interested in adding some of that functionality so hope that gives you a good look up natron opens your eyes to some new possibilities of motion graphics working in the open side of things again it can be daunting starting this tool out i know i was a little intimidated but hopefully this gives you enough that you can kind of see the basic working model try some things out and uh, hopefully let this community know how it goes. Let me know if I missed something really cool out of the box. I'm going to continue playing with this, and I'll certainly let you know if I find something that is gee whiz wow awesome to make another video on. And we can certainly discuss it in the comments, which I invite you to do, because this is an awesome community of awesome creators, and I love hearing from you and having dialogues about the challenges you're having, about the cool tools you're using that I haven't discovered yet. And we can make each other stronger that way. Please do give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome content coming forward. And I will see you again in the next videos. Take care.